Hello friends, in this video, we will have an overview of very important topic in mathematics. It is calculus. Unlike other branches of mathematics, in calculus, we need higher level of imaginations. But nevertheless, if you learn calculus from fundamentals, if you learn calculus from basics, you would find that this is a very fascinating and very interesting subject. Now let's start with the introduction. In Latin, the word calculus means pebbles. In fact, Romans used pebbles for the purpose of addition and subtraction on their computing board. During those times, Latin was the language of intellectuals. Scientists and mathematicians used Latin. So the word calculus became associated with computations. And then the intricate concept of mathematics which we call today as calculus was developed, this calculus name was given to it. In fact, Sir Isaac Newton had given the name science of fluxions to this branch of mathematics. It was German mathematician Gottfried Leibniz, who gave the name calculus to this branch of mathematics. Now let's peep into how calculus was developed. Newton was interested to analyze the speed of a falling object. So when he observed it, he found that every second the speed of the falling object was changing. During his times, he did not have the tools to analyze these changes. And he was highly fascinated by planetary motions also, why these planets move into elliptical orbits, why they don't fall, why they stay in the orbits and all that. For this also, a tool was required to handle this concept of rate of changes. So the necessity to handle the complexities of the problem at that time led to the introduction of the concept of a rate of change. This rate of change, as you would find as we go further, is calculus. Similarly, there in Germany, Johannes Kepler, he was also fascinated by planetary motion. He even developed the three laws of the planetary motion. But he also got stuck up at that time. Because during those times, mathematics was all steady. He did not have the tools 
to analyze this rate of changes. So, he exhorted the mathematicians of that time that to understand these concepts, planetary motions, and to analyze them further, better mathematical tools, better geometrical tools are required. Gottfried Leibniz picked up this idea. First, he brought himself to the level of understanding of Johannes Kepler and then he also developed this concept of rate of change. Thus, calculus was independently conceived by Sir Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz. Now let's try to understand what calculus is. So here I will deal with the most basic, most basic idea which is behind calculus. Calculus deals with the rate of change between two points. To be very precise, rate of change when two points are very close. In fact, to stretch your imagination further, rate of change between two points which are infinitesimally close. The two points which are so close that whatever closeness you can think of, they are closer than that. If you can apply this concept and compute the rate of change between two points which are closer than whatever closeness you can think of, then these two points are not different points. It becomes single point and the rate of change so computed is becomes rate of change not between two points but at that particular point or instantaneous rate of change. This is the concept behind development of calculus. Now we will discuss about two persons who contributed a lot during the initial development of calculus. First, Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton was born in Hamlet, Woolsthorpe, England. His father's name was Isaac Newton and his mother's name Hannah Isco. Yes, you heard right. His father's name was also Isaac Newton. Newton was so weak, so frizzled, that nobody expected him to survive even first day of his life. So he was deprived from his father and soon he would lose his mother also. Two years after his birth, his mother remarried Barnabas Simit. After marriage, Barnabas Simit and his mother moved to a village to rear one son and two daughters. Poor 
Newton was left behind with his maternal grandmother. More or less, for nine years, Newton remained separated from his mother. Till after seven years of marriage, Barnabas Smith died. His maternal uncle, William Esco, he put him into Trinity University. In fact, his mother wanted him to be a farmer, but during childhood, Newton did not have any skills. He did not inhibit any interest in anything related to farming. So therefore, they decided that he should be put into university. At the age of 27, he became professor of mathematics at Trinity University. It's my interpretation that his maternal grandmother and his maternal uncle contributed a lot in giving this genius to this world called Isaac Newton. You would be surprised to know, you would be wondering that all throughout Newton was very irritable, short-tempered and quarrelsome. Psychiatrists attribute this psychotic behavior of Newton due to his nine-year-long separation from his mother during his childhood. At Trinity, most of the students didn't attend his lecture. Nevertheless, he always took the lectures. In fact, during this time, Newton was much more serious and lost in his research work behind than in his lectures. The second person is Gottfried Leibniz. He also contributed a lot during the initial development, during the basic development of the calculus. He was a German mathematician. Whatever notations we use in differential calculus and integral calculus nowadays, these were first used and developed by Leibniz. Leibniz's father died when he was only six years old. He was brought up by his mother. He got his moral and religious values from his mother only and these values played a great role in his life. Leibniz developed calculus independent of Newton. In fact, there is a great controversy as to whether Sir Isaac Newton or Gottfried Leibniz who developed calculus first. It is mired in a great controversy. In my next video, I shall be dealing with the fundamentals of differential calculus. So do watch that video and if you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and also visit my website RK Academy at Ramesh Learn.
dot com. They would there you would get more blogs on calculus for learning further and studying further. Thanking you very much.